Hi, and welcome to our math. Today I'm doing a series of videos on an exam review and kind of an answer key. In this video, I'm doing a couple of Gauss Jordan elimination problems. Um, okay, for this one, it is three variables, so let's get started. Um, I'm going to start off by converting the system into a matrix 2, negative 3, 1, 19, 5, 4, negative 6, negative 1, 3, 1, negative 1, 10. And then that line for the equal sign is what lets us know that it's augmented. A matrix doesn't naturally have an equal sign. Okay, so what we do for the first part of gauss jordan elimination is we want our zeros so what i'm going to do is i'm going to just kind of cover up everything but that first column and what we're really looking for are zeros so what i want to do is i am going to circle this two in the first row first column and i want to use that two to zero out the five and three that's my goal I don't care about the rest of the numbers in the matrix. I don't care about anything else. I'm just looking at that first column and I want to use that two to zero out everything else. I am going to leave the two as is. I'm going to ignore row one, leave row one as is, and I'm going to use the two to zero everything else out. So to do that, I'm going to say five times row one minus two times row two. It's subtraction because the signs are the same. So I'm going to do two times five, five times two. That will make this a zero. For row three, I'm going to do three times row one minus two times row three because three times two times two minus two times three will get that to be a zero. Again, it's subtraction because all of the signs are the same. If I do these mappings, I should get my zeros. Again, the very first part of the very first set of series of steps is all about getting zeros. Don't worry about ones. Don't worry about the number you get outside of the zeros. Just worry about zeros. Okay, so this is what I'm going for. I'm going to follow those mappings. Five times row one is going to give me 10, negative 15, 5, and 95. Negative 2 times row two, and I do use that negative, so I always add down, is going to give me negative 10, negative eight, 12, and negative two. I'm gonna get zero, negative 23, 17, and 97. That should be positive. Yeah, 97. And this is going to go into row two. Okay, next I'm going to do three times row one. So I'm going to get six, negative nine, three, and 57. And then negative two times row three. I'm going to get negative six, negative two, positive 2, and negative 20, which will give me a 0, negative 11, 5, and 37. And this is going to go into row 3. Okay, now we're going to do a little bit of trickery. I know that in my next set of um, calculations, In my next set of calculations, I'm going to be either pivoting on this 23 or this 11. And I can do this. Rows are like books that are stacked next to your bed for your, you know, to be read pile or things you need to study or notebooks in your bag. Just it, they're things that are stacked up. Like when you stack things up, that's what it is. That's all. And you can stack rows how you want to stack rows, it's really up to you. And if I have a choice between pivoting on a 23 or pivoting on an 11, I would rather pivot on an 11. So what I'm going to do is with my magical trickery, I'm going to change this row two to a row three and this row three to a row two, just so that my numbers are a little bit smaller. 
that is all. So that's what I'm going to do for my next matrix. I'm going to keep row one as is, two, negative three, one, 19. I'm going to make this my row two, zero, negative 11, five, 37, and make this my row three, zero, negative 23, 17, 97. I make sure I have brackets. If there's no brackets, A, it is really hard to read what's going on in your work. And B, without brackets, you don't really have a matrix. Matrices have to have brackets. Once again, I'm gonna cover this up because that's not what's important to me right now. I'm also going to cover this up because this is also not what's important to me. All that's important is that middle column. This is what I care about. Um, in this 11, like I said, first pivot is first row, first column. Second pivot is second row, second column. And this is all I'm going to care about. And I'm going to use this negative 11 to do all of my pivots. So to get this negative 11 to zero out this three, I'm going to do 11 times row one minus three times row two. It's minus because the signs are the same. So if I take 11 times three, three times 11 and subtract them, this should become a zero. I'm going to leave row two exactly as is. This is not the row I'm changing. I'm just going to leave row two as is. And then I'm going to do 11 times row three minus 23 times row two. 23, 11, Subtract, this should become a zero. This is my mappings, this is my goal, this is what I want to do. Um, let's see, I can go down to here. Perfect, that's exactly what I wanna see. Okay, so this is my goal for right now. And I'm gonna do all of this work up here. So, I am going to do 11 times row one. So I'm going to get 22, negative 33, 11, and 209. And then negative three times row two is going to give me zero positive 33, negative 15, and negative 111. And when I add down, I'm going to get 22, 0, negative 4, and 98. And this is all going to go into row 1. Notice that's not a 1 or a 2. It, again, I care about my zeros. Zeros are what I care about. So that's all fine. Um, I wonder if this would be easier to read if I changed colors at this point. Um, okay, next I'm going to do uh, 11 times row 2. So 11 times row 2 Sorry, this should be a three. Okay, 11 times row three is zero, negative 253, uh, 187, and 1067. And then we want negative. 23 times row 2, so 0, positive 253, negative 115, and negative 851. And when I add down, I get 0, 0, so that's what I'm looking for, 72, and 216. 
Now, I really quickly throw 216 divided by 72 into my calculator just to see what happens when I divide by 72. And lo and behold, when I divide by 72, I get three. So this is what's going to go into row three because that makes me very happy. I like three, it's small. Um, so my new matrix is going to have row one of 22, zero, negative four, 98. Row two, I didn't change, zero, negative 11, five, and 37. And my row three is zero, zero, one, three. All right, so again, I'm going for those zeros. My first set of steps got me two zeros. The second set of steps got me two zeros. That's all I'm looking for, zeros. We're focused on our zeros. So now we have one more column, then we need those zeros. So we want, we want our zeros. That's what we're going for. We have a one here, and we're gonna use that one to find a few more zeros. So we are going to do row one plus four times row three. We are gonna do row two minus five times row three, and row three is done. We are solid on row three, which makes me very happy. All right, so row one is 22, zero, negative four, 98, and uh, four times row three is zero, zero, four, 12. So we have 22, zero, zero, one, 10. And when we divide by 22, we get one, zero, zero, five. Um, for row two, we have zero, don't worry about this problem, it's a much smaller one, uh, negative 11, 5, 37, and negative 5, row 3, is 0, 0, negative 5, negative 15, 0, negative 11, 0, 22, which we can divide by negative 11, 0, 1, 0, negative 2. So row 1 becomes 1, 0, 0, 5. Row 2 is 0, 1, 0, negative 2. Row 3 is 0, 0, 1, 3. Our answer is always an ordered pair. Uh, 5, negative 2, 3, which um, I would check. I've already checked for you. Um, check back into the original system. It will work. Uh, 2 times 5 is 10, plus 6 is 16, plus 3 will be 19. 5 times 5 is 25, minus 8 is 18, plus uh Minus, sorry, minus eight is 17. Minus 18 is negative one. Two times five is 15. Minus two is 13. Minus three is 10. Hmm. But I would double check on your own. Um, this last matrix, if we look at it, if we start by writing it in five, seven, four, 10, negative three, 144, four, two, 32. The fact that we have three equations and two variables means this last row is either going to become zero, 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 and we'll have a solution, or it's gonna become zero, zero, and a number, not zero, and it's gonna be no solution. Those are the two options we have for that bottom row. We're hoping for zero, zero, zero with a solution, um, but if we end up with zero, zero, not zero, then you know, then we will have not, no solution and we will figure it out 
as we go. Um, but this is not as big as the last one because this is really more a two by two. There's two, one pivot, two pivots. This is not as big as the last one. If we start with this five, we do row two minus two row one. And for this four and five, um, I'm not gonna do all of the four and all of the five. Um, oh, four, two, and 32. I'm gonna divide all this by two. I'm gonna make this a two, a one, and a 16. Because if I make that a two, a one, and a 16, then I can just do um, two row one, that will make that a 10, minus five row three, and I can keep the numbers a bit smaller. And you can do that. You can go through and divide four, two, and 32 by two. Okay, so row two, is 10, negative three and 144. Negative two row one is negative 10, negative 14 and negative eight. And this becomes a zero, a negative 17 and a 136. I am going to go through and divide this by negative 17 and get zero, one, negative eight. All right. When I do the next calculation and I do two row one, I am going to get 10, 14, and eight. And when I multiply by negative five row three, Uh, negative five times row three, negative 10, negative five, and negative 80. I'm going to get zero, nine, and negative 72. And when I divide this by nine, I'm gonna get zero, one, negative eight. This goes into row two, this goes into row three. And my new matrix, Actually, let's write the new matrix right here is five, seven, four, zero, one, negative eight, zero, one, negative eight. I know you're like, there's no room over there. That's okay. We can write mappings down here. I just want you to note that we are definitely going to have this zero, zero, zero. Um, this is good because sometimes you get to your edge of your paper and you're not certain what to do. So um, if I cover this up, and I cover this up, because I want to pivot now on this one, this is what I would do if you're curious on how to do this mapping, because I could have done it lower, right? Lots and lots of room. I'm going to do row one minus seven row two, and I'm gonna put that into row one. So this is one of my mappings. My other row mapping is going to be row two minus row three into row three, but I'm not actually going to calculate that since they are the same thing. I'm just going to put zeros there. So those are my mappings. I'm only gonna calculate the one though. So row one is five, seven, four. And negative seven row two is negative, sorry, negative seven row two is zero, negative seven and 56. So I get five, zero, 60. And when I divide by five, I get one, zero, 12. So I get, one, zero, 12, zero, one, negative eight, zero, 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 which means the answer to this one is 12, negative eight. And we can test it on these. 
Since I am at 20 minutes, I'm not going to. I suggest you do it though. But there's our answer. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. The last video for this exam review will be on inverse matrix. And I hope to see you on my next YouTube video. Thanks.